hi friends today we are going to discuss about accounting standards let us see what is accounting standards first applicability for ipcc group 1 so these are the standards that are applicable for ipcc group 1 accounts that is as1 disclosure of accounting policies and next as2 valuation of inventory as3 preparation of cfs as6 depreciation accounting as7 construction contracts as9 revenue recognition and as10 fixed assets and as13 investment accounting as14 amalgamation so these are the standards friends that are applicable to group 1 accounts when we are going through weightage wise nearly 16 to 32 marks from accounting standards now questions we ex expect on valuation part on disclosures accounting or case studies generally in account accounts paper question number one and question number seven on accounting standards now let us start introduction part of accounting standards now friends we are going through introduction to accounting standards the term standard denotes a discipline which prevails both guidelines and yardstick for evaluation it ensures uniform practices and common techniques how standards are created first area is identified that is accounting area and secondly it is sent to study circle for discussion about how to apply the policies and like that and thirdly inputs are obtained from study circle and draft is prepared by asp asp means accounting standard board here the exposure draft released to the public for comments so if any anything is wrong through the accounting standards for to know that this draft is released to public for comments from the public after considering comments revised exposure draft is prepared and again released to public for comments if any comments received from public then a revised exposure draft is prepared again after that it is again released to public for any comments and finally a draft is prepared by asb which is approved by central council of icai which becomes a standard so friends after receiving all comments from public it is again prepared a draft after that it is as after that it is finally prepares a draft is prepared by asb which is approved by central council of ICA. practically we have two set of standards that is one the old standards the old standards means what we are reading now and the new standards second is new standards that is which in line with ifrs that is converged accounting standards called ind accounting standards that is indian accounting standards now what is an accounting standard so we are just we have saw the introduction to accounting standards then what is an accounting standard it is a set of accounting principles and policies which need to be compiled while preparing financial statements and other statements doubt if an entity not for profit motive but is indulged in trading activity then even such non-profit organization has to comply with accounting standards so friends if you are running a business that is non-profit motive also but it is indulged in trading activity then such non-profit organization has to comply with accounting standards now we are going through applicability of accounting standards 
this is divided into two types that is company and non company again we are coming through company company is again divided into two types that is non smc and smc here non smc means which is not a small company if we say it is a non smc non smc we should satisfy the any of this that is it is a listed in recognized stock exchange whether it is a banking electric electricity or insurance and third if turnover exceeds 50 crores in the last year and the fourth borrowing exceeds 10 crores in the last year or holding a subsidiary that means if if a holding company is a non smc then subsidiary also non smc likewise what is smc smc means which is not an non smc that is which is not a a listed company or banking electric electricity insurance or turnover does not exceed 50 crores or borrowing does not ex exceeds 10 crores or holding or subsidiary there is no holding or subsidiary relationships now if a company is a non smc then what is the condition that is if a company is a non smc it should comply with all accounting standards and when we are coming through non smc there there will be have a, some relaxations to uh, when we are complying with accounting standards and when we are going through non company it is divided into three types that is l1 l2 l3 what is l1 it is a big entity same as non smc it means that the all the accounting standards should be comply with l1 entities that is big entities and we are coming through l2 that is medium type of entities when we we call it as a uh, l2 entities or medium entities that means the turnover should be greater than 10 crores and less than or equal to 50 crores and borrowing should be greater than 1 crore but less than or equal to 10 crores if this condition satisfies we call it a l2 entity or medium entity now when we are coming through l3 that is which is not l1 entity and which is not l2 entity and so we 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 call it as a l3 entity that is small entity so these type of l2 and l3 entities there is a some of the relaxation while come uh, when, while we are complying with accounting standards let us see once again the whole chart Additional points on accounting standard. It is intended to apply only to items which are material. Note, materiality refers to that item which may impact the decision of the users of financial statements if not reported or reported in additional points on accounting standard. It is intended to apply only to items which are material. Note. Materiality refers to that items which may impact the decision of the users of financial statements if not reported or reported in appropriately. Next, compliance with accounting standards is the duty of the management. The financial statement should prepare in compliance with applicable accounting standards. The auditor is supposed to express on the opinion on the compliance with accounting standard as prepared by management. Even if the financial statement is not in compliance with the part of standard, auditor has to express qualified option or adverse option. It means if you are followed 70% of the accounting standard rules, 
you sh the auditor should give report as per the standard that 70 percentage of the management is complied with the accounting standard and the remaining 30 percent should be shown as a not complied with the accounting standard this is the auditor duty to express the uh, accounting standard rules generally accounting standard has following four pillars that is number one definition and two measurement or valuation and three recognition and last four that is disclosures definition of the term asset an asset is a resource which is controlled by the enterprise as a result of part event from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the enterprise some of the additional points to asset is a resource which is not within the control of the entity cannot be treated as a asset examples employee is not an asset to employer because he, he may left anytime the em employer company and the second example is an asset need not be only long term that is a inventory short term investment are also taken as a asset a resource from which no future economic benefit or not expected to flow is not treated as a asset and note if an asset subsequent to its recognition does not meet the definition criteria it is has to be a written off that is example gps that is gps means gps gas and the next is railway example next definition of the term liability a liability is a present obligation of the enterprise arising from past events that is the settlement of which is expected to result in outflow from the entity note if there is no present obligation but there is a future obligation then we can say that there is a provision and not a liability and note number two a liability or if does not meet the definition of the after the recognition then the same has to be reversed and should be taken to pnl account credit side or general reserve credit side so this is the definition of asset and liability let us see now according standard six that is depreciation learning objects are one why we should provide depreciation and number two non applicability of as6 methods to provide for depreciation and number four factors which will impact depreciation and number five change in the methods of depreciation and last disclosures let us see these learning objects clearly one by one starting with why we should provide depreciation why depreciation is to provide for true and fair disclosure of fixed assets and to meet the concept of matching concept and to create a reserve internally so that after a certain period of time one can use the reserve for creation of new asset and the basic reason for depreciation may be the utility of the asset come down with the usage and technological changes and normal wear and tear because of these the value of asset may come down so we should provide depreciation for assets and when we come to the non applicability of the a6 these are the following four which are non applicability for a6 that is wasting assets that are co example coal mine oil well etc and second is regeneration regeneration resources that is forest leaf stock etc and the third is goodwill arising on business acquisition this this has a separate standard that is as14 and the last is land as non depreciable asset
now factors impacting depreciation calculation that is the estimated economic life the life over which the asset will provide economic benefit by usage and the next is estimated scrap value here the estimated should be only taken and the third is original cost of the asset itself and the revaluation impact on the book value of asset these are the factors impacting depreciation calculation now let us see methods to provide depreciation what it is methods to provide depreciation accounting standard says does not provide any suggestion nor the thumb rule for method of depreciation to be followed this means the accounting standard does not provide any method to follow follow for depreciation it is the management should adopt such method is to more appropriate as per situation so as per situation the management should decide which method is to be followed as um, as per situation as maybe a uh, straight line method written down value whichever may be followed as per situation this uh, those is op op uh, adopted by management now various methods to provide depreciation can be straight line method written down value sum of digits method production units method etc however the most popular method generally adopted is straight line method or written down value the management has to adopt a suitable method to provide depreciation expenditure however it should be ensure that the concept of matching and disclosure of asset at true and fair value is ensured with the depreciation accounting policy being followed example for a building where there are no repairs and maintenance management can follow straight line method of depreciation however if the asset requires repairs and maintenance over its usage then the written down method can be followed as in the initial year depreciation will be high as repairs and maintenance would be low and in the subsequent depreciation is low and the repairs and maintenance will be high for this let us look at chart now we are considering this diagram for which method is to provide depreciation as per repairs and maintenance if there is a building and there is no repairs so depreciation equal throughout the year there is no repairs to the building so here we can follow straight line straight line method for such building because there is no dip, uh, repairs and maintenance so depreciation will be equal throughout the year and when we go through second example that is depreciation is provided as per written down value here let us see in x axis the number of years we have taken and the plant and machinery has a repairs so depreciation decreases that is one first arrow starting with x axis we have provided that repairs are increasing year by year so as a result the second arrow that is starting from y axis e there is a downfall so while there is a increase in the repairs and maintenance there is a subsequently decrease in the depreciation so there is a matching concept when there is a repairs and maintenance to a building and there is no matching concept uh, because there is only decreasing trend when we are following straight line method and the building has a no repairs and maintenance so friends by this chart we can say that if and as i said there is a repairs and maintenance we should follow straight line method because the depreciation will be equal throughout the years i when there is a repairs and maintenance for a building or any asset we should follow wdv so the repairs and maintenance will be increases and the depreciation equally decreases now we are going through change in the method of depreciation how would you deal when there is a change in method of depreciation that is 
we know an accounting policy is a principle plus method to apply example providing depreciation is a principle i providing it through wdv or slm is an accounting policy so friends a change in the method of depreciation is obviously a change in accounting policy as though the principle of depreciation remains the same and the method is to provide undergoes a change so when there is a change in the method of depreciation it is a change in the accounting policy i the though the principle of depreciation remain the same so when you are changing the method of providing the depreciation maybe it changes the method from slm to wtv or wt to um, production of units method but the principle of accounting standard 6 remains same as per a as5 that is accounting standard 5 a change in accounting policy is required only when the following three says that is requirement of statute or the requirement of accounting standard or a change in policy would lead to a better disclosure and a better presentation so if these three form these three says the that our accounting standard is to that is our method is to change we should change the method of following depreciation as per as5 as per as5 read with as1 whenever there is a change in accounting policy the impact of such change should be disclosure in the financial statements so friends as per as5 with as uh, we should read with as1 that is whenever there is a change in accounting policy we should disclose that change in a financial statement why this change has been taken and what are the benefits it provides and all total the whole dis- uh, disclosure should be provided as per as1 as per as6 when there is a change in method of depreciation the effect of such change should be brought res- retrospectively and it should be taken to the pnl account debit or credit side this impact should be clearly shown on the face of pnl as depreciation due to change in accounting policy let us take a example in the method of change in the changing in the method of depreciation that is original cost of asset 10 lakhs estimated scrap value 1 lakh life of the asset 10 years and the method of following the depreciation straight line method after 3 years the management adopted wdv at the rate of 20 percentage now let us see what is the value for first after the first 3 years under slm that is straight line method that is the book value of the asset after first 3 years is equal to 7 lakh 30000 that is from 10 lakhs every year 90000 depreciation is provided under straight line method and next what would have been the book value at the year end of the third year if you follow the wdv method as depreciation here while we are following the wdv method the book value of the asset after first 3 years is 5 lakh 12000 so what is the decrease or increase in the value of asset so there is a decrease in the value of asset by 2 lakh 18000 then what we give effect for this 2 lakh 80000 is for this we will debit the pnl account with 2 lakh 18000 and the asset value we will decrease by 2 lakh 18000 so there is a entry the pnl account data to fixed asset account that is with the amount of 2 lakh 18000 why this has been af- uh, happened because there is a change in the accounting policy of depreciation from slm to wdv so from this example we can say that 
a change in the method of depreciation is obviously a change in the accounting policy because of this change in the accounting policy that is slm to wdv we have got a decrease in the value of asset by 218000 so friends what we say that a change in the method of depreciation is obviously a change in the accounting policy as though the principle of depreciation remains same the method to provide undergoes a change so the principle of depreciation remains same only the method changes so once again we will revise um, when we will change the method of depreciation or methods as per as5 as per as5 a change in accounting policy is required only when the requirement of statute and b requirement of accounting standard and c the change in the policy would lead to better disclosure and better presentation after when we change the method of depreciation or uh, any accounting policy the result amount that is decrease or increase in the value of assets should provide to p and l account as debit or credit now what we are learning is important that is whether a change in useful life of the asset or estimated scrap value is treated as a change in accounting policy answer is no because a change in accounting policy refers to change in principle or a change in method to comply with principle a mere change in scrap value or estimated life of asset does not mean a change in accounting policy the effect of such change has to be brought prospectively only that is why we are uh, while we are studying about depreciation cha method, method change we are brought change with retrospectively but while we are learning repeat whether a change in useful life of the asset estimated scrap value is treated as a change in accounting policy the answer is no why because a change in accounting policy refers to a change in principle or a change in the method to comply a principle a mere change in scrap value or estimated life of asset does not mean a change in the accounting policy because the and the effect of such change has to be brought prospectively while we studied about method of changing in the method of depreciation we have brought the change with retrospectively but while we are um, learning about useful life of the asset and estimated scrap value where, where there is a change between um, between these two the effect should be brought prospectively not retrospectively